Sometimes you just need to crank it up. Life can get pretty boring if your music is always medium loud, your scrambled eggs are always medium warm, your bike goes medium fast, your power supply voltage is medium low. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Who needs to be struggling along with only 12 volts or so when you can kick it up to 48? 48 has all kinds of advantages. Lower losses, smaller wires, better, well, I shouldn't be the one telling you all of this. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Let's talk about kicking it up to 48 volts with some experts. My guests today are Ian Massa and Robert Gendron from Vicor. And we're going to get our 48 volts on. And before we do that, let's Get all this stuff off the chalkboard, and while we're doing that, don't forget to click that link. There you can find more information about 48-volt power supplies from Vicor. Hi, Ian and Robert. Thank you so much for joining me. Good to be here. Oh, thank you. Okay, so why are so many power designs moving to 48 volts? Well, designs today are encompassing more and more capability, be it more processing capability, uh, higher communication rates, longer run times. It's a motor. It could be a more torque in a motor itself. LEDs, brighter LEDs, higher density LEDs. All systems today we see is that capabilities are increasing, and in all these capabilities are increasing. What it means for the power in the system is that more power is needed. Also, I think that other buses like 12 are failing to keep up with what 48 can bring and what those new requirements that are driving 48 need. So as people want to cram more processing into telecom or data center or more instrumentation into an automobile, 12 volts is really failing to deliver what they need. But why 48 volts specifically? What's magical about 48 volts? 48 volts versus 12 volts reduces the distribution losses. So delivering power or distributing power, you have what's called the I squared R losses. Distributing power at 48 volts reduces the current, which reduces the I squared R loss. It's about a 16x factor between distributing 48 volt power, let's say, versus a 12 volt system or power delivery system. So the gains are quite dramatic when it comes to power delivery. And that's why if you look in the industry today, there are many suppliers of converters operating either generating power to the 48 volt line or offering converters that take power from 48 volts down to a line voltage. Now at Vicor, we pride ourselves on making extremely high efficiency and high density type converters. So we feel that we enable products that actually exceed many of the conventional 12 volt type converters that are in the market today. Okay, let's back up a second and look how we got here. Who started all of this? I think you have to go back to telephones, and unfortunately not the ones that you have in your hand and that we're used to right now. <laughs> it's the ones that we remember sitting on a table, ringing away. Telephones were used to more efficiently transmit power or to lower voltage loss over distance, and they enabled simple battery backup with existing technology. So is there anything I should be worried about with 48 volts? Well, a lot of people do ask, is 48 volts safe? And the answer is absolutely. There is a standard in the industry called the SELV standard, which basically basically says that anything below 60 volts is touchable and safe. And that's why 48 volts is really used. It's basically the maximum allowable voltage under this self limit. So you're maximizing the reduction distribution losses while still maintaining a self classified voltage. I think another key point is recognizing that no special handling is needed. People can be easily certified to cover 12, 48, Anything that's within that range of self compared to higher voltage DC distribution where additional training is needed. So why exactly are we seeing this now? Can you guys give me some examples of applications? Sure. I think you can look online today and very easily see that data centers to lighting, power tools, automobiles, robotics, and industrial equipment, they're all working on either incorporating 48 volts into existing designs or making new innovative designs that are going to use 48 volts as the native way of transmitting and using power. All these are examples of industries or applications that are doing more. Uh, we're requiring more power, requiring a focus on efficiency and, and power delivery. And also, I think this is another example going back to our initial point that these are industries where 12 volts is failing. It's failing to keep up. So people have to move to 48 to survive. All right, let's dig into these examples. Now, what about data centers? So in the data center space right now, what we see is rapid growth of artificial intelligence going into the cloud, be it video recognition, autonomous vehicle, analyzing the data from that and such. But AI is becoming ever so present in these large data centers. 
AI processors are consuming more power. The more computational strength of the processor, again, translates to more power. Just like was mentioned earlier, historical or traditional 12-volt distribution or power delivery in these data centers just does not work anymore. Better distribution schemes are needed, and so 48 volts is really required for these new AI-type data centers. And in fact, if we look, Google, Cray, NVIDIA, WeWin, They've all highlighted the use of 48 volt in their systems today. And in fact, the ratings of the top green 500 type systems, four out of the top five are using 48 volts. Okay, and I think LED lighting was next. LED lighting, I think, is a very illuminating story, not just because it's a pun, but I think because everybody likes to walk around at the city at night. They like to see the flashing lights. They like the displays of what's going on. They also like the comfort and safety of walking in a well-lit area. And we all grew up in the era of halogen and sodium arc lamps and that harsh light. But what LED has allowed people to do is not only be functional, but provide this amazing aesthetic of a wide range of colors and brightness. And you get that by having plenty of power behind it, being able to control luminosity, but also being able to place these lighting instruments in outdoor or interior retail LED screens. LED panels are getting bigger so as they get bigger, you need an efficient way of transmitting the power through them. And you do that, as we talked about, by using the power at a higher voltage, a lower current, and a smaller set of cabling. That makes for an easier overall system to produce, to manufacture, to sell, and to maintain. All right, let's talk about some power tools. Well, this is an exciting one because I think out of all the areas, this is probably the one that's most visible to people. That is, if you walk in any home center today, what you see is 48 volt or 60 volt advertised power tools. Not just power tools, but also lawn equipment, lawn mowers, trimmers, etc., all being powered now at higher voltage batteries than ever before. When cordless drills first came out, they were 9 volt. But again, most drills today, the professional drills and such, running at 48 volts. They run at 48 volts, much like what everyone else is doing or what everyone else needs, and that is longer runtime, higher torque for their motor, be it a lawnmower and such, or a table type saw. 48 volts is enabling that in these new tools. I think it's also another good point to mention that those power tools rely upon and use innovations in battery technology. So as lithium ion became more and more prevalent in portable tools, they wanted to use a higher voltage because it doesn't make sense to do 12. It makes more sense to do 48 volts. And how is 48 volts helping in the automotive space? So 12 volts has been around for a very long time in automobiles. We've all known that. We've all worked with 12 volt batteries in our cars, either replacing them because they burned out over the winter or whatever. But what you'll see in the last few years is a rise of what they call mild hybrids. And that's code actually for automobiles that have a mix, a combination of 12 volt distribution and 48 volt distribution. Now, people started incorporating 48 volt distribution because they had more power required than 12 volts could safely or economically deliver. As power requirements went up, the amount of cabling that 12 volts would have to be used on just exceeded what the car weight capability or capacity was. So these cars would get heavier and heavier and heavier. Where is that the worst? In electric vehicles and hybrid vehicles. So hybrid vehicles had to go to 48 volts. And as they did that, they realized the advantages and all the other stuff that they could pack into that car. We call it infotainment, right? It's maps, it's listening to music. All that fun stuff requires more power. And so you right now have a combination of those two things in cars, but in the long term, everyone's saying it's going to be 40 volts entirely. Okay, it's time for my favorite. Tell me about robotics. In the robotics space, we've seen applications in warehouse type drones, in aperture arms, assembly arms, even in ATE type equipment, semiconductor process equipment, all moving towards 48 volts, either because of the density of the product or because of the, again, the distribution values of 48 volts as we've highlighted earlier. All these products are requiring higher density type solutions, but again, all these products are consuming more power than ever before. And they have to maintain certain form factors. If you're creating a drone in a warehouse, you can't increase the size of that drone. You want to maintain a very small form factor. And so 48 volts is enabling that in many ways. I think for the same reasons, capital equipment, you can talk about specifically semiconductor AT, had moved to 48 volts decades ago as a way of increasing channel density, increasing density, because they are, in the same way, trapped in that same size box that they have to pack more stuff into. So all the benefits we talked about before with 48 volts and the advantages over 12, the advantages over other options of being able to put more power, more function, 
functionality, more space for functionality and capability. That's why they moved to 48 years ago. Now, I didn't realize all of these markets were using 48 volts. How does Vicor play in 48 volts specifically? I think Vicor plays in a variety of ways, but most importantly, to start off, it gets to 48 from almost any way that you would need to. You can start off with AC, you can start off with DC. And we have products that will take DC in an isolated regulated conversion to bring you to 48. An isolated fixed ratio, so 48 to 12 unregulated, for example, with our BCMs get you to 48 volts. And if you want the highest efficiency, highest density, we offer an NBM, a non-isolated bus converter that does non-isolated fixed ratio conversion to 48. Combine that with our AC to DC converter, the PFM, we can take you from anywhere and bring you to 48. And that's really where your imagination can lead you next. That's great for getting to 48 volts, but now that I have it... How do I use it? Well, similar. We have products that will take that 48 volts and, again, convert it down to the required point of load voltage. We recently announced our Power on Package technology, which enables 48 volts to be used in data centers powering GPUs and CPUs and such. But we also have isolated and non-isolated regulator solutions or converter solutions to handle various applications across what we talked about and even in more areas. We also make, outside of a regulated type converter, we make what we call the NBM, which is a non-isolated fixed ratio converter. Excellent. Well, can you give me a summary of your main points? I think what we highlighted is that these industries are all utilizing more power, again, to increase their capabilities. The reduction in distribution losses that 48 volts enables over 12 volts is making people look at 48 volts and adopt it in these many systems. As I mentioned earlier, as Vicor, we're enabling them to take advantage of these distribution savings, power delivery advances by making converters that actually surpass what they could be doing with conventional 12 volt converters. I think it's key to recognize that as these big movers, data center and the automotive industry move into adopting 48 volts in a widespread fashion within their systems, everyone in the planet, to be frank, is going to see an advantage in the kind of potential things they can do with 48 volts because those players are going to drive down costs. They're going to cause a plethora of different options to be out there, not just from Vicor, but from other companies where you can design the most dense, the most efficient kind of system that you would ever want to, but you're going to have to do 48 volts to do it. Cool. And if I want more information, where should I go? You can go to our website, which is vicorpower.com. On our website, we have a white paper highlighting more about 48 volts being used in the industry. You can also go through our uh, portfolio of products that we've highlighted here, both in generating 48 volts and then also converting from 48 volts. I think you could also Google something like the Green 500 list, which will show you the list of supercomputing companies that have tried to make the most efficient, the greenest computing out there. And the way they did that was by moving to 48 volts. Very cool. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Ian and Robert. Thank you. Thank you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find more information about 48-volt power supplies from Vicor. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal or head on over to YouTube. Keyword, EE Journal.